my older son had asked me why the earth was had so much water and I was trying to figure out how to explain that to myself as well as to him. So I thought, well, what would happen if I took the water away and what would be left? So the first thing I did was I traced the continents and I used tracing paper and traced the continents like this on tracing paper. And this is one of the original pieces that I used to trace the continents. And, but it's hard to see on that. So what, I, what I've done is I drew them on paper. So, but you can see, for example, South America here, and this fits on South America. And that's the way South America fits on here. That's a tracing from this globe. Okay? So I have South America, and I did, you can see Africa as well. Here's Africa, and here's a tracing of Africa there, and it fits as well. So I've got Africa, and I've got Europe, and I've got all the other continents traced. There's North America, and North America, again, what I did was when I traced the continents, I traced them with the continental shelves. So you have the continental shelves and the outline of the continent. It's not exactly the same because it adds a little bit of uh, land around the edge, Some, sometimes more, sometimes it's almost the same shape as the continents. So I have those. Um, and what I did was I decided, I tried to put them on another globe that would be um, smaller, which would be about 60% uh, smaller than this globe. So what I came up with was this globe from the original tracings, and I put them onto this globe here. Now let's see if I can find, the colors coordinate, so what would be Green on this globe is green on this one. So South America is green, and here is South America here. And you can see that South America fits like that. Okay? Fits on there, okay? like this. And then I took Africa, and I put Africa on. And I started with these, globe, these continents because they are the easiest to recognize. So the Africa goes on here, and here is Africa. And you can see that Africa... Cape Town would be here, and Africa fits on this way. So you've got Africa, and here is North America. And you can see North America on here. This is North America. Here's North America. Some of the continents were difficult to put on because they were so large. Asia, for example, if you look at this globe, is quite big. And I divided Asia into three parts. I've got what I call South Asia, North Asia, and India. Uh, the, the tracing paper on this side folded, but I also noticed when I did that that there was a, um, a series of faults and mountains that, that, that uh, corresponded, so those are the lines of, of those faults, and I think at one time these may have been two continents and came together. That The earth is getting larger and that it started off much smaller, and when it was much smaller as it was with this globe here, you had water covering it. And gradually, as it expanded, the water went down in between the continents. And that's what we have today, that the water between the continents. Now, this is only one stage of the, of the expansion. I believe that at one point it was a lot smaller than that. And that it was then the oldest, if we could take the oldest part of the continents, like the Laurentian Shield, for example, and some of the areas of Australia, which are three and a half billion years old, that if we could take them away from the sedimentary rock and the things that are on top of them, that we could probably put a globe together that was much smaller than this. But this is just a mid-stage of the Earth's expansion. I have a video of Titan's Pie, which is the painting that's behind me, and it is a painting about the development of the Earth and how the Earth was formed and how it's growing and changing. And uh, the problem with the painting, as far as an explanation, is it only shows four faces of the Earth and doesn't show the development and how it worked. Currently, there's a theory on plate tectonics where the continents are being subducted or going down into the Earth, and they're being pulled into the Earth, and they, they basically melt, and then they rise up somewhere else on the earth, like in the middle of the ocean where there are faults and there's um, 
uh, lava and magma coming up from the center of the Earth. This theory basically proves all that to be incorrect. We don't have subduction of the continents into the Earth. They're basically floating on the top. And they're floating on the top of another layer. And the other layer would be ocean crust. But the ocean crust would run under, or does run under, the continents. Now, the continents weigh a lot, and they're very big, and there's a depression down into the, um, into the ocean crust. Um, but you can see through uh, that there's a movement of the under, uh, under the ocean crust, that there's movement that happens. One of them is the chain of volcanoes that follows from uh, Hawaii going s sort of northwest through to the Kamchatka Peninsula. And that volcano has been moving kind of through the through the, has been moving through the Pacific Ocean in almost a straight line or a curved line, it comes like that. To have this vent continually spewing over millions and millions of years um, gives the indication that the top, the, the ocean floor is, is on top of another layer that's underneath it and that there's a vent that's coming up um, spewing out this magma and lava. One of the problems that geologists have had, or people that look at Earth theories, is that when you look at the major fault lines in the, on the globe, is that there's a fault line that runs between North America and Europe, South America and Africa, and it follows the pat almost the pattern in the center of the ocean. But when you try to put them together, you find that the, the tip of uh, South America, Brazil, will overlap and go into the Congo. It, it, it rides up. There's quite a lot of South America that would ride up. And the same with North America doesn't fit. But if you turn it and you put here, you have Africa, and you, you put it with, uh, with South America com coming into the side of Africa this way, and that you have part of Africa coming into North America and Europe fitting in this way, what happens is that South America, at one point, had turned around this way and fit into North America here, so that this tip of South America fits into this curve of the Aleutian Islands, and you'll find that Lima, Peru, which is about here, is not too far away from Los Angeles, and the two continents fit together this way. And they, it's amazing how the coastlines, they don't look you know, like they fit together, but they actually fit together without any overlapping, as you can see there, without any spacing. One of the things that happens when the continents move is that they tend to be pulled to the North Pole uh, because of the strong magnetic force at the North Pole. So all the continents basically start to come to the North Pole. But if you think of the globe as being kind of a balance, and that what happens is that the the weight of the continents, if it's like a skin that's out of balance that are, are here, every once in a while they're going to th be thrown out of balance and they're going to slide to try to equalize the weight that's on that layer. The water would be in that, that layer as well. But they're all moving slightly and they're in depressions in the layer that's underneath, which is the floor of the, of the ocean which runs underneath the continents. So what happens is they're moving a few centimeters, a few inches every year. If they get too out of balance, the force of them being out of balance will cause them to move very, very quickly from one location on the globe to another location on the globe that could be thousands and thousands of miles away. This would do two things. It's going to change the continent's um, position, which will change the continent's climates dramatically. And it also is going to cause an incredible amount of volcanic action. Now, the action is going to be in two forms. One of them, it's going to slide across the ocean floor. And when it slides across the ocean floor, the ocean floor will liquefy because of the force of the weight of the continents sliding across the ocean floor. It will turn the ocean floor into liquid uh, stone, magma, or lava. The thing that every time the continents slide, it causes massive destruction on the Earth because you've got um, 
the volcanic action that's going on. You have the continents changing position, so the climates change. And you have the creation of mountain chains because the leading edge of the continents will slide over the ocean floor. It's kind of like the, the, the continents get into a car accident. They've just all crumpled up. And so that that's where the, um, the, like the Rocky Mountains and the uh, mountains on the, on the western coast of the United States indicate that the uh, continent slid westward. The Earth has had five periods where there have been great dyings that they know of. There's probably been more than that, but there's been five major great dyings. And geologists uh, presume that this is caused by meteor strikes. That's what's happened is a meteor has come and smashed into the Earth and caused great volcanic activity and that the, um, this caused uh, the creatures that were on Earth to die. As we know with the dinosaurs, the dinosaurs have, uh, you know, were wiped out by a small ish compared to some of the things that have happened in the past um, event, some volcanic event, and the dinosaurs died out. There's one where the trilobites all died out, and there's been all these different periods. There's been, there are five, there might be more, but there's five known. My belief is that it hasn't been because of meteor strikes, but because of the continents and the continental plates shifting position on the globe. And when they move thousands of miles or hundreds of miles, that it causes such an incredible amount of volcanic activity that the, the air is destroyed to some degree, the, the oceans boil and the, a lot of the creatures die. And there's only a few little remote areas of the earth that are basically um, f f clear enough that some creatures or some minuscule creatures can survive. Um, and that these dyings have been, you know, been repeated over time. And as the continents um, get out of balance, each time they've moved in position, the move has been more and more dramatic. So that what happens is the first dyings may have killed a lot of things off, but the um, subsequent dyings are, get, are getting more and more, uh, can get more and more. Um, uh, disastrous for life on Earth. It won't kill life totally, but what it'll do is it will destroy most life forms. Now, right now, our Earth is out of balance. Most of the continents are either at the North Pole or in a few are sort of at the South Pole, basically Antarctica and South America, Australia, sort of in the South. But they're all jammed up at the North Pole. If they decide to slide, they're going to slide quite dramatically out of their position. That could cause another major dying. And there's no way we can avoid it, at least with our technology today. There's no way we can stop the Earth from doing that. The, the result is that Earth as we know it will disappear. The plants, the animals, there may be some left, depending on the gravity of the, of the occurrence that happens.